I want to take this opportunity to invite you all to the sharing of the Word of God and this wonderful fellowship, even through this uh, platform, the online platform. My name is uh, Chris Bogo. I am a priest at the ACK St. Stephen Cathedral, Jogorund, and I'm born again by the grace of God. I welcome you all so that we may share and hear the word of God, this wonderful moment, know the will and the purposes of God for us, and even be challenged, be rebuked, be corrected, or be built up through the word of the Lord. I want to read from the book of Acts, chapter 27, verse 1 to 12. Acts 27, verse 1 to 12. Though I will be sharing uh, from the whole chapter 27. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius, whom belonged to the imperial regiment. We bonded a ship from Andromisium about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to, the, to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. The next day, we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there, we put out to sea again and passed to the Lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When we had sailed across the open sea of the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There, the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Sinidas. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite Salmon. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens, near the town of Lycia. Much time had been lost, and sailing had already become dangerous, because by now it was after the day of atonement. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous, and bring great loss to ship and cargo, and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and in northwest and this is the word of the lord let us pray father thank you for your word open it in our hearts O lord that it may be alive to us speak to us O lord in jesus name we pray amen in this particular chapter there is a great narration of events of Paul and other sailors, even as they were sailing in the sea of uh, the sea, uh, this particular sea is called Adriatic Sea. And I want to share on a message titled Against All Ons. Against All Ons. Paul was in prison in Caesarea. And the governor who was there was called Festus, and there was also a king by the name Agrippa, the king of Caesarea. These two, they had an opportunity to listen to Paul because he was a prisoner, 
and they wanted to hear him put up his defense. Paul, he has just succeeded in his appeal to have his case heard and executed by Caesar in Rome, that is in Italy. Paul and some other prisoners, they were handed over to a warden or a centurion named Julius. Altogether, those who set on sail in a ship with Paul, in total they were 276. And the sailing was very problematic in the Adriatic Sea. The sea could not allow them to hold their course, but instead they sailed to Crete, meaning they went a different direction because of the storm and the wind in the sea. At the Crete, that is in verse 10, Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous. In other words, there will be a problem. And bring great loss to ship and to cargo and also to our own lives. And in verse 11, we hear that the centurion, instead of listening to Paul, he listened to the pilot of the ship and to the owner of the ship. For they argued that this was not the right time. It was winter, and winter at this particular island, it was going to be very bad for them. And therefore they hindered to the ones of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the pilot and the sh uh, ship owner. And the Bible continues to say that the majority, they, handle, they were of the opinion that they sail to other islands and not to, the, to Crete or to stay at the Crete. I am reminded of the words of our president when he said that even science needs God. These people, they were the experts. Paul was not. They said we are not going to listen to Paul, who is a layman in this particular field. So nevertheless, they continued in the journey. They sailed on. The storm was still raging on in the sea. They tried everything possible or everything they could, including throwing the anchor, putting the ropes down, putting the ship, the small ship, for their safety, even are uh, active. They were people experienced in this particular work. They had stood in the sea for so many years, and they had their first-hand experience. Nobody would even question their ability. They were experts in their trade. Simply saying, these people knew what they were doing. But I want to suggest that things do happen in our lives sometimes, and they defy odds. They seem illogical, and they completely defy any sense. These are times when the, uh, the scriptures say that even young lions, though they are endowed with the power and the strength, they fail and they die because of hunger. But God is strong, and he never fails. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles Chapter 16, verse 9, part A, comes in handy at, at such times that the eyes of the Lord, the scripture says that the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth. And yet when God and Angaria are heaven, they range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. And I ask, is your heart committed to the Lord? He is going to strengthen you. Know that there is an eye above us. There is an eye above us which is looking on us and see whatever we are going through. We are not alone. Hallelujah. 
in verse 20, and I quote, When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. This is what they are saying. They gave up hope. For so many days there was no sun. They could not see the appearance of stars. It was dark in the sea. They finally gave up all hope of being saved. A trial or a test for one day, a trial or a test for two days, even a week, don't bother us so much. But when it persists, we start giving way. Our will to fight on starts to weaken. And finally, it is very easy to give up on hope. These are for sure very desperate times. The times we are living in are very desperate. I am speaking to a people who have lost their jobs, to a people who have lost their businesses and their income. I'm speaking to people who are not sure even about their tomorrow, whether they are able to see their tomorrow. Our future is very uncertain and it weighs on balances. I want to read verse 21 through to verse 26. The Bible, the word of God says, After they had gone a long time without the food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sell from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and the loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. I think that is good news for these people at this particular time. Verse 23. Last night an angel of, of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run and ground on some island. This is Paul. He is saying that an angel appeared to him last night and he gave him the following encouraging ones that they should take courage. First, firstly, he tells them, you've not eaten for some days. You've not taken anything for some days. But an angel appeared to me. These are the times that we need to hear the voice of an angel of God speak to us and tell us, take courage. Do not give up on hope. So he told them that the angel told him, surely no one is going to be lost. Secondly, you are going to be hanged by Caesar, meaning you are going to sail through successfully to Rome. I say that when trial persists, we start giving way. We start weakening even in our faith. The same thing was happening to these people. They were not able to eat. But the good news came with Paul. Paul speaks to them. And I want to say that in desperate times, even the less listened people, too, are now able to make sense. What we had trivialized all of a sudden becomes important. The things we thought they are not important, we despised. Now we are able to listen. We are able to give them importance. And I'm reminded of this man who was serving uh, 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 this particular king who had leprosy, Naman. Maybe this lady or this girl was despised, but when the king was in his desperate times, he was able to listen to the maid. For example, in these times, we are able now to consider our families more carefully. We are able to listen to our children 
even they are polite. We are able to have our spouses with us and we are able to share times with them. We are able even to consider the word of our laborers, even our employees. Maybe they have sense in whatever they are saying. The things we had trivialized in desperate times, they suddenly become important. Let us hear God say, men, keep courage. And there is this song we love singing, that courage, brother, do not stumble. Let us keep courage. For 14 days, they had stuffed themselves. They could not eat anything, and the food was there in plenty. People in a ship, they carry with them food enough to carry them through the journey. But they could not eat. They had no appetite because they were in constant suspense. They were not sure of what was going to happen the next moment, not even tomorrow, the next moment, even in these raging storms in the sea. Their experience had made them to hate food. Sometimes we go through stuff, even food is not good and doesn't taste good to the mouth. And we hate and loathe the food. But yet, Paul tells them to eat for survival. He tells them, if you don't eat, you are going to die. And I want to encourage us, let us do the right things, the things we must do. Let us continue doing them, for we must survive. For our survival, we must do them. And do them diligently. He prints with them to stay with the ship. For if they tried to escape, they would uh, perish in the sea. Some of them were thinking, let us uh, get on board on the smaller ship and try to run to uh, safety with this uh, uh, emergency ship. But the Paul tells them, if you do, you are going to perish in the sea. But if you stay with the ship, you are going to be saved. None will be lost. Finally, though they suffered shipwreck, they were all saved. That is in verse 41. Some could uh, swim to the shore. Others on the planks or timbers which were breaking away from the ship. And others, they were holding on for their dear life on pieces of the ship. And they were saved. They were able to go to the, to the shore on these pieces of ship. Brethren, we are in that kind of an experience. We are in a ship in the middle of a, a, of, a, of a sea, and there is storm ranging. And in days are moving on, like they seem they are not coming to an end. And we feel like it is for eternity. This particular turmoil and problem and struggle is happening to us. I want to submit it to us. Like Paul said, stay with the ship. Eat for you have to, for your survival, you have to survive. Eat. Seek what you should seek. Follow instructions, for they are important at this particular time. These instructions, they will help us so that we may cling on before we see our salvation. Praise the Lord. Be strong though. Though we are in a ship and we are almost a suffering shipwreck, a few casualties may be experienced. We may lose some of our property, in quotes. Like them, they were able to throw over, uh, uh, overboard the cereals, the grain, the food, and other items, which were the valuables in the ship, so that it may be light a bit, and they may be able to, to, to sail safely to the shore. We may lose some of these things. We may have lost some lives, and it is so sad, and so uh, 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 saddening that these things are happening to us and we cannot help. But there are a few lessons, two lessons I want us to pick from this particular uh, story of Paul and the ship. Number one, it is good to heed to instructions. When they were at Crete, Paul told them, let us stay here and wait because the journey is, doesn't look good. It will be dangerous, we are going to lose items, valuables and even lose our lives. But they never hindered to Paul. 
Sometimes, even the person who seems like he says nothing, sometimes it is good to listen to them. Maybe that is where our salvation is. Nevertheless, they continued in the journey. But the God of Paul was together with them. He was with him even in the ship. And he was going to save them. Because of him, because of some righteous guys, some righteous men and women of God, God is going to save this world. God is going to save this, our nation, Kenya. And God is going to save this family called St. Stephen. The St. Stephen family, there is salvation even in our reach because of some righteous guys who are seeking God and who are heeding to instructions. So it is good to listen and follow instructions that are being given from different quarters at this particular time. Number two, when we hold on to hope, we are persuaded to have faith. When we hold on to hope, we are persuaded to have faith. And remember, Hebrew says that faith is confidence in things that we hope for. Confidence. And therefore, we have to uh, 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 cultivate a confident spirit in us that it is not over until it is over. We say that, that we, are not, we have not received a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self-control. Let us con restrain ourselves from doing things which are not correct and right. Let us be strong. Let us be self-controlled and self-disciplined. Let this we will, um, uh, uh, grow to faith. We will be persuaded to have faith in God. We allow time for us to see in full what God was doing behind the curtains. When we cling on for longer, for a bit longer, we are able to see, we are able to allow time to pass, and we are able to see what God was doing behind the curtains for our own advantage. People of God, God is together with us. Whatever storm, whatever we are going through, God is interested. He is together with us. And he is going to make sure, though we suffer shipwreck, in quotes, we are going to be saved. Our lives are going to be saved. Together with our children, our families, our loved ones, and this particular nation. And you speak of the deliverance of God. And you will be like the Israelites. When they were coming from Babylon, and they said we were like people who are dreaming. We will be like people who cannot believe. It will be like a good movie in our eyes when we are able to go to the other side of this particular sea because God is together with us. Be strong. Be of courage, you brother. Do not give in to fear. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. You've spoken to us, O Lord, in great detail that we may be strong and in faith. Though we go through storm, and this particular time, O oh Lord, we cannot hide from you. We are scared. We fear. However, Lord, you are telling us, fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's will or wish to give you the kingdom. Help us, O oh Lord. We are little flock. We are weak. At our best, we are very weak. Even when we are trying, O oh God, we still find like fear is still having its way in us, O oh Lord. Help us to, have, to overcome fear by having faith, by trusting the word of God, by soaking ourselves, our hearts and our lives in the word of the living God. Just like Paul, he had the angel, he believed the angel, he told these sailors together with him, may you believe this one, may you stay put, and surely, Lord, you are able to save them. Even if you, you save our lives, O oh God, with the dread of a, of a string or a rope, O oh God, but, Lord, you are going to deliver us and save us, O oh Lord. Help us to trust, help us to cling on, Help us, Lord, against odds to know that, Lord, you are still behind us, walking behind the scenes, and you are going to do a mighty miracle and a mighty deliverance. We thank you. We honor your name. Provide in these times that we provisions as cast on God. Help us to look up to heaven, for you are the other 
and the finisher of whatever you have started in us. We thank you, we bless your name, for this is our humble prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you.